When I taught a course and then wrote a book on rationality, I was confronted with a puzzle. On the one hand, our species can be proud of astonishing feats of rationality. We figured out how to get to the moon and take pictures of our home planet. We have plumbed the origins of the universe, the nature of life, the functioning of the mind. We have fought the four horsemen of the apocalypse, reducing the toll of scourges that have immiserated humanity for millennia, including war, famine, poverty, and child mortality. At the same time, a majority of Americans aged 18 to 24 think that astrology is very or sort of scientific. <laughs> Large proportions believe in conspiracy theories, such as that COVID-19 vaccines are, consist of microchips that Bill Gates is trying to implant in us to surveil us, or that the American deep state houses a cabal of cannibalistic Satan-worshipping pedophiles. Many people fall for fake news, such as Joe Biden calls Trump supporters dregs of society, or Yoko Ono, I had an affair with Hillary Clinton in the 70s. And many believe in forms of paranormal woo-woo, such as uh, possession by the devil, extrasensory perception, ghosts and spirits, witches, and spiritual energy in mountains, trees, and crystals. So if people can be rational, why does humanity seem to be losing its mind? <laughs> it's not an easy question, and I hope you will indulge me in a four-part answer. The most obvious is, motivated reasoning. Now, rationality is always in service of a goal. However, that goal need not be objective truth. It can also be to win an argument in which the stakes matter to you. As the journalist Upton Sinclair pointed out, it's hard to get a man to understand something when his livelihood depends on not understanding it. To show how wise and moral your group is, and uh, your religion, your tribe, your political sect, and how stupid and evil the opposing one is, sometimes called the my side bias, and probably the most robust of the 200 or so biases that have been documented by cognitive and social psychology, and incidentally, the only one that is uncorrelated with intelligence. Smart people can be uh, ingenious at figuring out why their side is superior to their rivals and to, within a coalition to gain status and to avoid ostracism as a hero for your side. The second part of the explanation uh, lies in primitive intuitions, ways that our species has made sense of the world for uh, millennia. For example, the intuition of dualism, that a person has a body and a mind. When we deal with other people, we don't treat them as hunks of meat or robots or wind-up dolls, but we assume that there is a mind, a locus of beliefs and desires, even though we can't perceive it directly. Well, from there, it's a short step to suppose that there can also be minds without bodies, uh, which leads to beliefs in spirits and souls and ghosts and afterlife, reincarnation, ESP. Another intuition that we are uh, prone to is essentialism that living things contain an invisible essence or stuff or power that gives them their form and their abilities. From there, it's a short step to believe that disease must be caused by some kind of adulteration of your pure essence by some foreign contaminant. And hence, uh, we get resistance to vaccines, which, by the way, is as old as vaccines themselves. Because when you think about it, a vaccine consists of injecting into your flesh the very substance that causes the disease in the first place. It's not surprising that it is counterintuitive. And resistance to genetically modified organisms, which also seem to be adulterating the pure essence of your body with some kind of uh, contaminant. It explains why people are receptive to various kinds of uh, quack cures. We heard yesterday about threats to the uh, northern white rhinoceros. One of the reasons the rhinoceros is so threatened is that there is a widespread belief that powdered rhinoceros horn is a cure for erectile dysfunction. And why people are receptive to um, homeopathy and herbal remedies, which seem to be infusing some kind of pure uh, essence into the tissues of the body. Uh, and why, also why culture after culture have 
rediscovered the harebrained idea that you can cure disease through bloodletting and other forms of purging and fasting and getting rid of toxins. A third intuition that we, are, uh, that we use to make sense of the world is teleology. Now, we know that our own plans and artifacts are designed and organized with a purpose. Well, from there, it's a short step to imagine that the world is designed with a purpose, and so to be receptive to creationism and astrology and synchronicity, in the vague sense that everything happens for a reason. The third part of the explanation is that these primitive intuitions are unlearned and more objective truths are acquired only by trusting legitimate expertise. Scientists, journalists, historians, uh, government record-keeping agencies. Uh, few of us can actually justify our beliefs, including the true ones. Um, and uh, uh, it, surveys have shown that people who deny the consensus of science, creationists and climate deniers, are not scientifically illiterate. In fact, on tests of scientific literacy, they score the same as people who endorse the scientific consensus. The only difference is politics. The farther to the right, the more denial there is of, cl of uh, uh, climate science and evolution. So weird beliefs persist in people who don't trust the establishment, who think of scientists and government record keepers and journalists as just another self-interested tribe. Finally, uh, the, and part of the answer to the question of why people believe outlandish things is, uh, it depends what you mean by believe. Uh, as a cognitive psychologist, I've come to realize that people hold two kinds of beliefs. They're beliefs in what I call the reality zone. This would be the physical objects around them, the other people they deal with face to face, the memory of their interactions with them. Uh, beliefs in this zone are held to be testable, and uh, people hold them if they are true. They have no choice because reality is unforgiving. You can't keep gas in the car and food in the fridge and the kids clothed and fed and off to school on time unless you are in touch with the uh, hard truths of reality. On the other hand, there's what I call the mythology zone. These uh, include the distant past, the unknowable future, faraway peoples and places, remote corridors of power, what really happens in the uh, White House or 10 Downing Street or the Kremlin or the boardrooms of big corporations, the microscopic, the cosmic, the counterfactual, the metaphysical. Beliefs in this zone are held because they are entertaining, they are uplifting, they're empowering, they're morally uh, edifying. Whether they are true or false is uh, unknowable, according to our intuitions, and kind of irrelevant. That's not why you hold these beliefs. Uh, examples uh, include religion, which almost by definition consists of beliefs that you hold uh, uh, by faith rather than evidence. National myths, the great heroes and martyrs who founded our great nation. Historical fiction, has anyone really asked the question of whether uh, Henry V issued those stirring words that Shakespeare attributed uh, to him in, uh, at, at the, the, uh, uh, on the, the battlefield. Uh, fake news and conspiracy theories. People who believe that there is an all-powerful um, oppressive state seem to have no compunctions about sharing this view uh, in public where they would be vulnerable to arrest and imprisonment by the all-powerful state that they seem to be so concerned with. Or take, for example, the belief in Pizzagate. This was the predecessor of QAnon, the conspiracy theory according to which Hillary Clinton ran a child sex ring out of the basement of Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria in the outskirts of Washington, D.C. Now, among people who believed in Pizzagate, how did they react? Well, an example would be that um, one believer left a one-star review on uh, Google of the pizzeria said the dough was incredibly underbaked and there were some suspicious looking men giving funny looks to my son. Now, this isn't the kind of response that you would have if you literally thought that children were being raped in the basement. Presumably, you'd like, call the police. So what does um, the belief Hillary Clinton ran a child sex ring really mean? Well, I think an accurate translation would be, I think Hillary is so depraved that that's the kind of thing she's capable of. Or I think an even more accurate 
uh, translation of that belief would be Hillary, boo. Which is to say that beliefs can be expressions of moral convictions, at least in the zone in which it doesn't actually impinge on our day-to-day -day lives. Bertrand Russell once said, it is undesirable to believe a proposition when there is no, good, uh, no ground whatsoever for supposing it is true. Now, if you think that that is a obvious, banal, unexceptionable statement, then you are a uh, product of the Enlightenment who believes that there can be evidence for all of one's beliefs, but this goes very much against human nature, and in fact, Bertrand Russell's apparently innocuous statement is a radical, unnatural manifesto. All of this leads to the question, how can we, we become more rational? Well, to start with, the tools of formal rationality, logic, probability, uh, Bayes' rule, game theory, correlation and causation, I think should be part of the cognitive toolkit of every educated person. That rationality should be the fourth R together with reading, writing, and arithmetic in the nation's schools. But it isn't enough just to teach something in school, because as an educator, I would be the first to concede that generally pupils forget the lessons in the classroom as soon as the ink is dry on the exam. But these have to be part of the conventional wisdom, part of the etiquette and mores of rational discourse. Uh, it should be uh, an, an awareness of typical cognitive fallacies like the availability bias, the my side bias, arguing ad hominem, should be promoted and just part of our conceptual wisdom. The ideal of basing beliefs on evidence, changing one's mind when the evidence changes, should be seen as signs of strength, not as weakness. And I'm going to quote a friend who is a technical writer at Google, the linguist Ann Far Farmer, who signs her emails, it's not about being right, it's about getting it right. That, uh, those are uh, watchwords. Third, the institutions that promote rationality with their uh, rules for overcoming human fallacies and biases must be safeguarded. In institutions, one person can notice and make up for another person's biases. This helps explain the puzzle of how individually rational people can be capable of feat, individually irrational people can be capable of feats of great rationality. Um, they can make us collectively more rational than any of us is individually. Uh, for example, if you give people simple logic problems, uh, one out of 10 will get the correct solution in, in uh, many of these puzzles. But if you put people in small groups, then seven out of 10 get it right. All it takes is for one person to spot the correct answer, and he or she can almost always con convince the other members of the group of the solution. Uh, what do I mean by rationality promoting institutions? Well, at least in theory, there's science with its demand for empirical testing and its in, uh, institution of peer review. There's democratic government with its checks and balances. Journalism with its demands for editing and fact-checking. The judicial system with the adversarial proceedings. Uh, academia, at least in theory, with the ideal of freedom of inquiry and open debate. And even Wikipedia, which has its flaws but is uh, surprisingly accurate thanks to uh, the uh, community of editors that can alter one another's work and the commitment that they all sign up onto of objective objectivity and neutrality. Uh, most social media, um, not so much. Uh, what it means is that uh, to safeguard these institutions and their reputation and the trust in them, uh, experts should acknowledge their fallibility. We start out ignorant of everything, and that should be uh, made clear that the people who have a claim to expertise should not be uh, priests, they should not be oracles, uh, they should be prepared to show their work, why they believe what they believe, and gratuitous politicization should be acknowledged. This, I believe, is a uh, severe problem with our august institutions of science today, which seem to be falling over themselves in attempt to brand themselves with uh, 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 flaming uh, left-wing rhetoric uh, not, and, and uh, symbolism and tropes, completely unaware of the fact that this is guaranteed to alienate the center and the right among the American population, to say nothing of politicians.
So in sum, uh, why do members of a rational species behave so irrationally? They deploy their rationality to win rather than to learn. They fall back on primitive intuitions. They distrust the institutions of rationality. And they treat beliefs as moral convictions, not empirical hypotheses. Thank you. <laughs>